The Xiaomi Poco X3 Pro is a good phone kind of trapped between two price points and living in the shadow of the excellent Poco F3. But even with that said, is it still worth a look? Well, let's dive in. Thanks for watching 9to5Google here on YouTube. Remember to thumbs up, hit subscribe, and then tap the bell icon to be among the first to watch our upcoming videos. So we've seen a whole raft of affordable Xiaomi devices bombarding the market over the past couple of months. The firm has even attacked the premium segment, but as a champion of value smartphones, the Poco X3 Pro is firmly at the affordable end of the spectrum. If you'd like the Poco X3 NFC from last year's, that's chunky hardware that comes with that device, then we think you'll be right at home with the X3 Pro. Xiaomi has just added or tweaked a few small areas for a design that is instantly familiar, but does feel slightly better for it. It's still mainly polycarbonate, which should mean that daily abuse won't prove to be that much of an issue here. I do personally really like the steel blue colour, as the soft satin sides are nicely punctuated by that brighter blue strip that hosts the Poco logo. The logo is embossed under that polycarbonate chassis and is more visible when viewed face on and just disappears when the X3 Pro is held at an angle. You'll either love or hate this brashness of a design, and I think, I must admit, I do kind of dig it, although it can be a little overbearing for some people, I can understand. Like the X3 NFC, the Poco X3 Pro is a chunky hunk of tech. There's a real weight to that, although it is made of polycarbonate, and it does feel good in the hand thanks to the soft curves at either side. It's a tried and tested form, which is to the benefit of overall usability. I don't actually like the button placement here though. The volume rocker for me, at least, is far too high on the upper right side, while the power button is mushy and I gotta admit it is kind of cheap feeling. The fingerprint scanner though is very fast and accurate, I must admit. Stereo sound is also offered with a combination of a bottom firing speaker and the earpiece. At full volume, the entire chassis does actually vibrate at the rear, but it doesn't affect the overall sound quality. That said, it isn't exactly great for music, but for videos and movies, the sound profile is fairly good. There's also the bonus of a 3.5mm headphone port up top if you do want to plug in some speakers or a decent pair of headphones. Xiaomi also appears to have gone all in on 120Hz displays this time around, even on the firm's affordable lines. The downside? While well, the Poco X3 Pro comes with a 120Hz LCD screen rather than a far more preferable AMOLED display. It's still a solid LCD that benefits massively with that higher refresh rate. Will it wow you? Well, I'd have to say probably not. It doesn't get quite as bright as many as its contemporaries, but you'll still have very few legibility issues in bright sunlight. There is a very minor colour cast at lower brightness levels, but it's very hard to notice unless you're in a very dark room. My personal biggest gripe, and I'm sure many of you out there with LCD displays in general though, is that black reproduction is never quite up to the levels that I'd actually prefer. Things sometimes look more deep grey than black, and the Poco X3 Pro does suffer in that regard, but it's not to the detriment of the smooth experience. Although to contradict myself here again, there is some image ghosting on this panel. You'll notice it most often when scrolling up or down quickly. It's just something to note, and I think it is important to mention, with most LCDs do suffer from the same issues. Things are interesting though with the Poco X3 Pro performance levels, and it's more or less all oh, good news. The weird thing here though is that the Qualcomm Snapdragon 860 chipset inside is effectively just a rebranded Snapdragon 855 Plus. In terms of performance, it's not quite the same as last year's high-end flagships, but it's still very, very capable. I quite like this approach of overclocking existing chipsets though from smartphone manufacturers and then packing them into budget devices, as it's actually giving you some major graphical performance benefits over current mid-range chips. Sure, the power efficiency isn't going to be quite as good, but you can leverage that with a massive internal cell, something that Xiaomi has done here. It's practically faster than the Pixel 4 XL, which itself is the most powerful Google-made smartphone and still a fairly fantastic performer. That's impressive given that the Poco X3 Pro comes in at well under $300 and has plenty other bonuses on offer. Having reviewed a ton of Xiaomi devices in recent months, MIUI 12 though still has not grown on me enough to be my first choice Android skin. That said, the wealth of features is a major draw for those wanting to tweak, tinker, or just toy with the smartphone. I can't think of a single thing that has caused problems with the Poco X3 Pro day to day. Sure, MIUI does cull background app processes a little too often for the sake of battery longevity, but overall, it's snappy and smooth. Gaming is also a breeze with very little you can't play at the highest graphical settings and fidelity. 
5G connectivity might be prove or might prove to be a missing sore point if you are an ardent mobile gamer, but I saw no real issues using mobile data for multiplayer games. There isn't a great deal though to write home about when it comes to the camera setup on the Poco X3 Pro. It looks identical to the odd shaped bump on the back of the Poco X3 NFC, and there are some minor tweaks here and there. I think if you value camera performance, then this probably isn't the phone for you. Sure, you'll get solid photos from that 48 megapixel main sensor in good lighting conditions, but overall, it's a fairly middling camera system for a smartphone in this price segment. The 8 megapixel ultra wide is pretty average in that it still looks okay but incredibly soft compared to the main wide shooter personally i think you'll be really happy with the shots though offered by the x3 pro there is a fair amount of added digital sharpening that can be spotted when cropping in colors can be exaggerated a little bit here and there but the overall quality is slap bang in the middle of the road for a budget setup such as this for me using the poco x3 pro as a secondary device with a backup sim installed it was actually a battery beast in my day-to-day -day experiences even when I decided to rock as my solo smartphone for a short period, I simply could not kill it in a day with even my heaviest usage patterns. This included several hours of 4G data usage, playing and testing Call of Duty Mobile and general texting, instant messaging, and even taking some photos. It's dependable for me over a two day period. And even if I reduce my load, I think I might even be able to pull two and a half days without needing to seek out a charger. That said, I wouldn't call the 33 watt charging super fast by any rate, but it does top up what is a large 5,120 milliamp hours internal battery in just a couple of hours from under 10%. That is a win-win for me as someone that doesn't want to charge a device every single day wherever possible. So wrapping up this pretty short review, I must admit I did love the Poco X3 NFC when reviewing it. The Poco X3 Pro simply ups that power while retaining almost all of the same DNA. The result is a very good smartphone that may be labeled Pro, but I think realistically ends up coming across more light in its execution. That isn't necessarily a bad thing, as the X3 Pro is still very, very good for the price. It's just that there is a far more compelling option in the recent Poco lineup. I think if you simply must have the best bang for your buck, then I suggest looking squarely at the Poco F3. It has enough leaps in performance and slightly better design and a better overall display and some other smart overall choices Tossing in that notion aside though, it is hard to deny that the Poco X3 Pro is yet another impressive Xiaomi made smartphone that will still be a good option if you want longer battery life, some neat hardware touches and a 3.5mm headphone jack. So all in all that is a Poco X3 Pro in a nutshell, a very good smartphone but trapped between two price points. Up your budget and the Poco F3 might be a better long term option is what I would say. With that said though, if you have any questions, be sure to pop them down below and we'll do our utmost to answer as many as possible. But until next time, this is Damien with 9to5Google saying thanks for watching and I will speak to you later.